Uh, hello, so this is the fifth lecture on uh, Adamar matrices. So it's going to be a bit different from the first uh, four ones. It's going to be about almost Adamar matrices, which as the name indicates are uh, not exactly Adamar. So as the idea, this is something that we uh, met already in the, in the first lecture. So uh, so that in the real case, and but your multiple of four, right, the size. So in view of applications and everything, the problem comes what to do when n is not a multiple of four. What are the natural matrices which uh, replace the other marks? And there are two, uh, two ways of doing things here, either uh, quasi Adamar or almost Adamar, depending on what you follow, either the Adamar determinant bound or the one or estimates. So here I'll talk about almost Adamar, which is following this, uh, this norm estimates. So this is a, a quite recent business. It's work that I did with, uh, with Colin Schlenker and then Nikita and Zikskovsky. Also Mohan has some contributions, so it's, uh, it's quite small. In the real case, a lot of interesting combinatorics, it's, it's very nice. And then in a complex case, you can look to, I mean, there, there is a Fourier matrix, no need for, uh, no need to look into these things, but we looked recently with Nikita just by curiosity and we found a conjecture that uh, there are no almost Adamar matrices in a complex sense. And that, that's really something very powerful. And so for me, it's all about all Adamar matrices conjecturally complex. So that would be uh, something very interesting. So uh, I'll tell you about, uh, about all this. Uh, let's find the presentation. So here we go. Almost Adamar matrices. Uh, so yeah, the idea is that, uh, let's start to the real case. So the, the n, n by n Adamar matrices form this, uh, this set, and then plus minus one intersection with this. So the problem is how to locate analytically these matrices. There are two ways, there you are here. You try to locate this or vice versa. Then what to do when n is not a multiple of four, and then what to do the complex case. We'll discuss all this. So let's start to the Adamar bonds. This is something that we've seen. So a uh, determinant is maximized by Adamar's proof is just trivial. I mean, uh, the good definition of the determinants, the volume. And uh, well, this suggests when any is not a multiple of four to talk about quasi-Adamar matrices. I mean, things maximizing this, uh, this determinant, right? So this is a, uh, was that? Park and Song, yeah, who introduced these matrices and uh, there's a lot of interesting combinatorics. Now an alternative way, so this was taking binary matrices and trying to locate some of the orthogonal ones. Now you can do it the other way around. Start with the orthogonal one and try to locate the binary matrices via analytic methods. And that's Koshish Vartz. I mean, uh, this maximized uh, the one norm. And this suggests to look at the maximizer or even the local maximizers of the one norm over n, or v scale by scale root of n. So these are called almost Adamar matrices. Now, in order to develop the theory, uh, let's just go to the complex case, okay? So let's, let's do the computations in complex because uh, this will be valid also for real with a few modifications. So we'll have the theory both real and complex. And also let's do it not only for the one norm, but for all the P norms. So uh, you see we had the Cauchy's bars here. So obviously it's gonna work with holder instead. You get something like this. So it depends on the exponent. If it's smaller than two or greater than two. Uh, and two, of course, the matrix being orthogonal, the two norm is constant over the orthogonal group. So there's nothing interesting. And more generally, if you want, you have yes. And so if it works with P norms, work with the Jensen, right? So for concave or convex function, if you apply it to the um, uh, squared absolute values of the coefficients of unitary matrices, this thing here is maximized, minimized for, uh, for other marks. So this is uh, elementary. Now, uh, so we have many notions actually of almost Adamar because, yeah, let's go back here. You see we have concave con convex functions, powers of P, which can be smaller, bigger than two. And the local maximizers won't, won't necessarily coincide. I mean, uh, this is not clear. So we have plenty of notions of Adamar matrices, of almost Adamar matrices. So 
this is the terminology we're going to use uh, here. Uh, I mean, this has changed over the time because we, uh, we looked into different things. It's been how many, 15 years. So this is the terminology, the most recent one. So almost a damar when it localized, locally maximizes the one more. Uh, this is good for the unitary case. P almost a damar with P is more than two if it uh, locally maximizes the P norm. Now, if P is greater than two, it's locally minimized the P norm. And finally, we'll call it absolute almost a damar if it works at any P. So it's uh, locally maximizes that P is more than two, locally minimizes that P greater than two. So this for the unitary group, and of course you have uh, real versions of these things. With ON replaced by uh, UN replaced by ON. So it is not the same thing. I mean UN has to locally maximize something, but maybe UN uh, ON is inside, so it's not the same thing. Okay. So I have plenty of notions. We're most interested in the one with the one norm, but uh, the other ones are uh, interesting too. Now, in order to get started, we need to do some differential geometry, right? And uh, the first thing when you take derivative of that, the UIJs will, uh, will be on the bottom. So you don't want them to be zero. And actually, they are not zero. So that's a discovery with uh, Konich Lenker in the real case. So if something locally maximizes the one norm over the orthogonal group, the entries must be non zero. So as the idea, just rotate by, uh, by T to coordinates. You get something like this. And now you compare the norms of this and of this. And uh, this depends on T. So if you take the derivative, it must, uh, must vanish at the local maximum and uh, you get this. Now in a complex case, exactly the same happens, but the computation is uh, more complicated. So that's something that I did with uh, Nikita. So this thing here is one page and this one is three pages, I think. It's a lot of trigonometry there, but you managed to, a bit of combinatorics too. You managed to get the things. So uh, this is very good. You know, the computations that will follow will have UIJs in the, uh, at the denominator. No, one tricky thing is that uh, uh, this way don't really have the lemma for uh, all the exponents p. So uh, yeah, that's a good question. Still to be solved for any p. Now let's get into critical points now. So uh, will be uh, everything uh, will uh, will be on uh, unitary orthogonal matrices with the non-zero entries. That's why I put a star here. Star stands for uh, non-zero entries. So it's good to start with a general function like this, remember like in Janssen. But for the moment, we don't need concavity convexity because we are, we are not yet into Hessians. We are at order one. So it's a critical point of such a guy. You can only if W, you start self adjoint where Wij is uh, something like this, the signs and then the derivatives of this. Well, this is just Lagrange multipliers. I mean, uh, you have your manifold UN given by the usual equations. So I have this Lagrange multipliers and the derivative of this must be uh, the space span by uh, the derivatives of the, uh, the equations. And now, well, the derivative do some geometry, something like this. So it led to equations of this type. And uh, so finally, something like this, something must be self adjoint so That's the, the formula. Now, uh, the interesting thing is that uh, somehow you would like these things. Remember, I had all this notion of almost Adamar, so I'd like this thing to work for any function phi, or at least for any uh, p norm. Actually, algebra, uh, here we are into algebra, right? We're not yet doing Hessians. So it's the same thing to be a critical point of all these guys for any phi, or a critical point of all the p norms. And this is just the following thing. So uh, let's consider the color decomposition of a unitary matrix. I mean, by, by colors, we mean the, uh, the lengths of the, the lengths which are positive of the coordinates. So the lengths uh, range over the reals. And for any real, you take the zero matrix containing either zero if the length is not a good one. And if the length is not a good one, you take the, the phase there. 
So that's how we call color decomposition. And we call it, uh, well, semi-balanced if these guys are self-adjoint and balanced if all these guys are self-adjoint. So if you look at this, this is self-adjoint, it's exactly this somehow. So it's a critical point for any phi, if and only if it's critical point for all the p-norms, that's what I was saying. And it's semi-balanced in this sense. Why it follows from this? I mean, this must be self-adjoint for anything like this. So you can basically put everything here. So that's how, uh, how you get to, to this. So now let's pause a bit with this. We can go right, right on into Hessians, but uh, actually this notion is purely combinatorial. It's, sorry, it's a quite interesting notion. It's uh, semi-balanced and balanced matrices. So the class of balanced matrices, so it contains all the Adamar, stable and transposition, complex conjugation, adjoints, tensor products, Adamar equivalence relation, and it contains this matrix. So you take the all one matrix uh, times two. So it's two everywhere, but two minus n on the diagonal. The uh, rescale bar on over n is unitary. So it's, a, it's quite a big class. So all this is like trivial. And in addition, contains many, uh, many other interesting uh, examples coming from uh, uh, incomplete block designs, balanced. So uh, let's call a BC pattern any uh, matrix, a zero one matrix, uh, such that any rows look like this. Okay, so BB, right here in the middle, BB, you know, mismatchings, and then zero and one matchings, A and C. So the point now is that, uh, well, these are not unitary, but by plugging in some, some special uh, parameter of X, Y, coming from ABC, there is a formula, they produce unitary matrices. And these are balanced, yeah, that's, uh, that's interesting. And also the circulant and self adjoint matrices are balanced. So uh, this is really, I think, a nice, so you have all this, now all these more advanced examples, and the theory is here. So it's, it's a really nice definition, very nice block design theory somehow, which I think it's still waiting to be explored. Uh, we'll get back to this a bit later. Now, let's go into Hessian so that, so uh, yeah, there are like, I don't know, five, 10 pages of computation. So let me give you the final result. So uh, what means to be almost an MR? So in the complex case, here is the thing. So you have to take the sign matrix. By signs, I always mean the phases, okay? In the real case, the signs are plus minus one. In the complex case, the signs are by definition the phases. So this matrix must be self-adjoint, right? That was the critical point condition that we found. And I've tried the Hessian and everything, that's your positivity condition. So X must be positive and this kind of uh, horrible guy, you see the edge on the bottom, as I was saying, must be positive for any Hermitian matrix. Uh, why Hermitian does the Lie algebra of UN, so do the computation there and it depends on the Lie algebra. And, uh, yeah, that's what you get. It doesn't look that good. Now, in the real case, it's basically the same thing, but uh, with a subtlety. So uh, X must be no longer be positive, but the sum of the two smallest eigenvalues must be positive. So actually that's a fix in the original paper with uh, Nikita and Karol Zikskovsky, we are the mistake, we are thinking that it must be positive, but if you look at it carefully, so that's repaired in a, in a paper with Nikita more recent, the sum of the two smallest eigenvalues must be positive. And let me tell you why, why this difference appears between complex and real, because it's interesting. So in complex, as I told you, your, your computation is in the Lie algebra of, uh, of your answer. It depends on anti Hermitian matrix. So I have something like this. You need a trace to be smart as you, you can believe me. Okay, it's a bit technical. So now, well, it's the same as the matrix to be positive. So that's, uh, that's how you get from anti Hermitian, you get to Hermitian positive and positivity. So that's why you get positivity there. Now, if you get the same thing but with anti symmetric, is the sum of the two smallest eigenvalues which has been positive. It's a, it's a trick there. And that's why we get to this result. So our characterizations now. So they might look a bit complicated, but uh, 
Okay, I can work out on a run computer by where these are uh, very effective. So let's talk first about the, uh, the real case. So uh, in the real case, uh, remember we had this, uh, uh, these patterns, let's find them. So pattern is a zero one matrix of my block design things such that any two rows of representations of the columns look like this. So the number of mismatchings, zero, one, and one, zero, equals the other one. And the idea is that by plugging in uh, suitable numbers x, y instead of zero, one, uh, you get a unitary matrix, with a, a two entry unitary matrix. So x, y, you just solve some equations and you get them. Now, uh, well, these are all almost Adamar if an analytic condition is satisfied, so which is over there. Why is this true? So, I already know from before when I'm looking at critical points that these are critical points. So, now you just have to add the positivity condition uh, coming from uh, what we got here. This, um, where was it? So the sum of the two smallest eigenvalues is positive. So it's just a one single condition, and this is it. If you compute it, actually this, um, yeah, this kind of patterns, I mean, they, are, uh, they decompose, the spectral decomposition is easy to compute. So to be more precisely, actually we don't really need that. So uh, this is uh, the formula that you need. Everything expresses in terms of ABC, so, uh, so it gives you the results. As an application of this, the recovered net matrix I was talking about, to everywhere and to minus seven on the diagonal. So we knew that this was a critical point actually for all the p norms. And uh, with this, I mean, it's really a two, two entry orthogonal matrix. So it comes from a pattern. You apply the previous results and you get it. That it's almost at the mark. Now, uh, this is actually P almost at the moment. That's very interesting. So this was proved by Mohan with uh, very different techniques. I mean, it's tough analysis, what he's doing, because all these SCM computations for that was uh, it's really quite complicated and it's for P is one. So uh, for more, uh, more general P, you have to really go into really advanced techniques. So this was just Lagrange multipliers and SCMs. I mean, it's, uh, undergrad calculus, what we're using here. But uh, Mohan for uh, Pierre Mostadamar, he, he uses a lot of uh, yeah, advanced techniques. Now, uh, so this is a very basic example. Now, there are many other uh, funny examples, but uh, I put them here, not so much place. So, uh, in, so these are all in the papers of Nikita and Zikskovsky called the Mostadamar matrices. We have such designs coming from uh, projective planes like this funnel plane. You see a triangle like this, like this, or the pally plane, a pally biplane. I mean, there are many, many uh, interesting uh, combinatorial objects which uh, which produce almost all the matrices. So very interesting. And also we have uh, tables there in the paper on Nikita and Zikskovsky of uh, of the actual norms. So looking at the local maximizers. If you want the best one, the one which uh, produces the maximum of the one or when it is different, uh, not a uh, multiple of four, you have to compute there and uh, you have candidates for that. Now, the other interesting case, so there are always, in all this business, there are two cases, block designs and circulant matrices. So in the circulant case now, uh, well, you can do it by uh, by Fourier. So there, normally you do it with Bjork in the circular case, but for this kind of questions, it's better to write in Fourier. So we have this uh, very nice dilemma saying that the matrix is circular if only if it's diagonal in Fourier. So that's um, it's better to do it like this with Fourier. So uh, the idea is that well, everything depends, of course, on the first row vector. And uh, well, when you apply Fourier, it must be uh, must be unitary. That's for a matrix to be a Damar. And then the positivity condition. Well, the idea is that all these matrices that appear in the Hessian and everything, these are all circular, so it's, it's all about vectors. 
So basically, the idea is that a suitable manipulation of this gamma in Fourier should give you something positive. And here's the manipulation. We take the sine, once again, sine uh, over the mid circle. Then you do something like this, a sum, and then you apply Fourier, and this must be a, a positive entries. So all this follows from, uh, yeah, as I told you, everything is circular and it depends on the vector. So uh, that's how you get it. As an application of this, we have this very nice, uh, for any M, there is a circular matrix like this with cosinus numbers and many other interesting examples. And uh, if I remember well, this does pretty good for the one norm. So very nice theory. I mean, uh, it's uh, yeah, definitely a lot of combinatorics, all these pictures with planes, biplanes, and all that. So uh, very, very nice combinatorics of long design type with some free analysis in it. And as a main application, um, well, the submatrices of Adamar matrices are actually almost Adamar. That's something that we discovered with Nikita Schlenker. And uh, for generalizing this work on minor, so it must be truly. In and the others. So, uh, yeah, that's a very interesting thing. The submatrices of Adamar matrices, uh, most Adamar. Now, uh, regarding the complex case, so uh, this is something very surprising. So, we haven't looked at it because uh, there is no need for matrices there, right? There, you have complex Adamars at any end. So, uh, but with you and Nikita will say, yeah, let's take a look, see what we guess. And actually, you get nothing. So we, uh, we have this criterion, right? So it can be run on a computer or uh, the Hessian. And uh, we verified all the real Adamar matrices, so which localize the one or more n, don't uh, locally minimize it or maximize it on the n, unless they are Adamar, of course. So, and same for all these group design things. I mean, we did many, many verifications and every time we have a proof that uh, it must be Adamar. So that's our conjecture, almost Adamar. For the one norm in a unitary sense means Adamar. In other words, if you want to put out Adamar, the local maximizers of the one norm on UN must be global maximizers. You see, it stops here actually. Local maximizer or one normal global maximizer. It looks very simple, but it's it's hard as a problem. So in all cases that uh, that we tried, we need a kind of random derivative thing. So uh, let me show it to you. That's somehow the conclusion. Or it's a bit technical. So take orthogonal symmetric circulants, matrices, unitary symmetric circulants. And uh, the idea is that. Phi is the quantity there that we had in the, well, let me show it to you. Yeah, that's the phi, the thing which must be positive, okay? So, must be positive, so generally you have to prove that it's negative somehow. And you cannot prove that it's negative, you prove that the average, the, uh, the random derivative, somehow it's negative, that's why it's negative. And uh, the, the random derivative should point towards OSCN, this orthogonal asymmetric circular matrix is written in Fourier. I mean, it's just the power of the C2 group. And it's something like this. Well, it's a bit technical, but anyway, so this is somehow uh, the, a conjecture which would more or less imply this. So a lot of work to be done here, and this conjecture would be extremely interesting because it's a local characterization of the complex Adamar matrices, analytic, you see? So it's uh, very, very nice. I mean, uh, in the real case, then this matrices must globally maximize the norm or globally maximize the determinant. So it's global, all these results starting from the Adamar bound, but it's something local, you see? I mean, if you locally maximize, it's a global maximizer, so it's on the Mars. It's a, it's a local conjecture. So very interesting all this stuff. Well, so uh, this was it. So uh, finally, it was a bit as the last lecture. So uh, with the stochastic things, I told you in the beginning that uh, it's going to be specialized by be stochastic, but finally it's going to be about all Adamar matrices because they are all be stochastic due to some very complicated symplectic geometry reasons. Middle and Wolf. Now here it was almost the same thing. So 
we ended up talking about all complex Adamar matrices. This might might fit in this theory. The conjecture at the end is uh, would be very very useful. It would be a global, a local, powerful tool analytic. So this is it, and uh, we'll have one more lecture about uh, Padamar matrix models made of quantum groups of factors, for Neumann algebra, a lot of things, lattice models, and all that. Okay, so uh, see you soon.